Okay, so that hole goes right through there. That is basically the only reason I turned the tenon on that end, was to do that. And I've done that now, so I'm going to turn it end for end. Now for the bottom end, I'm going to put a pendant uh, out the bottom uh, and uh, the way I've been doing it lately is I, put, I make a pendant with a 3 8 tenon on it that will slip up into a 3 8 hole in the bottom of this uh, ornament and I make the tenon long enough so that it will come right out flush on the inside basically um, and then the center piece has a quarter inch tenon on it so in the 3 8 tenon that's on the pendant I bore a quarter inch hole in it so that the center piece gets glued into the quarter inch hole on the, ten on the uh, pendant which in turn gets glued to the bottom of the uh, of the ornament so I'll just switch to a 3 8 bit here That's a 3 8 Forstner bit, only because it was handy. It doesn't uh, make any difference whether it's a Forstner bit or a Brad Point bit for this. Forstner bits have a tendency to clog, especially when you drill an end grain with them, a boring end grain. Then I'll get that out of there so I don't uh, bang into it later. And I'll try and remember to look at the time. Okay. So now I've done all my preparation. So the next step is to turn the uh, the ornament because it's pretty much uh, a lot of it is going to be interrupted cutting I want I'll be running it at a fairly high speed I'll put it back up to uh, 2500 rpm And there's 2500. I'll be doing most of the shaping with a uh, spindle gouge. Uh, some detailing with a skew perhaps. Hopefully that's sharp. Yep. So I'll be turning uh, a little flange, basically just turning the bottom into a spherical bottom with a little flange on the bottom of it for the uh, pendant to uh, butt up to.
Okay, it sounds like I'm getting a fair bit of chatter, but the surface doesn't look like it's uh, been chattered too much, so I guess it's uh, doing all right. Now you can see I still have uncut areas around the holes. What I'm trying to do is basically remove all that flat uh, so that the hole is basically the whole side of the ornament. And I'm just working on the uh, unsupported part first because as these get thinner there may be more chatter. So uh, I'll leave the mass up here until I've completely finished the bottom end here. Okay, yeah, I'm down to about a sixteenth of a flat of an inch of flat there. I haven't really done much at the uh, equator of the uh, hole there, but uh, I'll get to it. I don't want to take any more out of there than I have to at this point. Still looking pretty good on the cut surface. Okay. Still a little bit of flat there. That one is pretty much cut and that one is too. So it wasn't dead on center. That much difference, uh, like removing the extra on these sides, will make that hole on these two sides not quite round, but I don't think it's enough to be noticeable. I want a flat area right on the bottom for the flange on the medallion to butt up against. I didn't think that tightened down all the way. Okay. So just a little few light cuts to uh, get things where I want them.